we're also talking about lockdown skeptics. And this is absolutely fascinating, Rod, isn't it? Because you've got a unit within the army that was actually spying on people who were critics of lockdown. Uh, this is really kind of Orwellian stuff here. It's now come to light thanks to Big Brother Watch. We'll be talking to someone later on who was targeted, Peter Hitchens. He's been a big critic of lockdown. What do you make of this, Rod? Well, well done to Big Brother Watch for, uh, for for publishing it and well done to the whistleblower for telling us all about it. It's, a, it's an enormous scandal. Um, and as one of your uh, viewers mentioned just before the break there, uh, there must be a minister who was responsible for that, uh, for that decision uh, to be taken, and whoever that minister is should be sacked. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it, it beggars belief. That being said, you know, um, the thing which really frightens me is the collusion between uh, the government uh, and the um, uh, social media high tech companies. Mm. Um, that they all do one another's bidding when this sort of stuff happens. And, of course, the fact that, actually, if you're honest, Peter, no one's interested. Mm, uh, the mm. BBC didn't run this story at all. I, I couldn't find it anywhere on the BBC. Mm. Uh, and I listened and watched. Uh, it's not It's not in the Times, you know, mm. uh, which is our own paper, you know. Um, the Liberals don't want to report this kind of thing. They do not like it. Uh, is that because, Rod, there is just a lazy assumption that anybody who criticises anything to do with lockdown is there for some crazy conspiracy theorist and therefore they should be monitored? I mean, I just find this very, very worrying that if you disagree with government policy, I also wonder how high it goes. If there is going to be a unit within the army that is doing this, does the, does the defence secretary know about it? Does the prime minister know about it? And if they don't know about it, why do they not know about it? Well, no, exactly. I'm sure you're right. And the, the first thing you said, you know, is this is just lazy thinking that everybody is a nutter who who is who was opposed to lockdown. Uh, I don't think it's just that. I think it's a simple case of bias. These, mm. these people are biased. They are biased towards the left and they don't care when the laws are broken, when the rules are broken, if it's in in pursuit of their own agenda. Uh, and the BBC's behaviour during lockdown after the first couple of uh, after the first month was appalling. You know, it, it regularly discriminated against anyone who had anything contrary to say to what the government was doing. And um, increasingly, we now see that actually those lockdown sceptics, of, of which I wasn't one at first, I ought to say, you know, I wasn't one. Uh, my wife was, as it happens, and is currently crowing uh, over over uh, over breakfast whenever we talk about it. Um, but but uh, increasingly, it seems that they were right. Mm. <laughs> These people were absolutely right. Uh, and this is the problem with this kind of censorship, which is that uh, no matter how much you think it's in the public interest to stop this kind of stuff, it never is. It's always good to hear the truth, and it's always good to hear a varied range of opinions. And that's whether it's from the left or from the right. But that's something that the left simply cannot abide. It simply will not put up with. It is fascinating how this story is being ignored. We're talking about it all morning. Julia's been talking about it. Uh, I'm talking about it. We're talking about it now. Uh, you're talking about a simple case of bias here. There was a group think in regard to lockdown. There was this idea that yeah. it is just perfectly fine and anybody who criticises it is a moaning mini. But now we're seeing a lot of the uh, effects of it, as you correctly say, Rod. Rod. Yeah. We're, seeing, yeah. we're seeing the mental health impact. We're seeing the financial impact, for goodness sake, in terms of, uh, in terms of furlough and all the money we have to pay back uh, to say nothing of where the economy is itself. There's, there are all sorts of impacts here and still we're not talking about this effect in general or the, the, wi the widening of this debate. Thomas Fatsy actually is with us later on. He was a big lockdown critic as well. Do you think people just kind of are, are too short-sighted? Do they not want to know about this? Do they not want to know that any dissent well, is, being, is being clamped down upon by the government? I'm sorry, it just comes back to the same point I was making. It's bias. Mm. Um, the, the BBC and other organisations do not wish to ac admit that they were wrong. You know, they, they will not do that. Um, and you're absolutely right. With every, with every day that passes, it becomes more and more difficult to accept that the, that the lengthy lockdowns that we endured uh, were anything but damaging both to the financial health of the country, but also 
the physical and mental health of the country, that they were damaging in all three areas and worse than anything that would have been occasioned by, by, uh, the, by the virus itself. And that is beginning to sort of percolate through. Uh, and you're beginning to hear things like that uh, in, 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 in bits of the mainstream media, but not in those, not in those areas of the mainstream media which uh, decided that anybody who said that kind of stuff at the time in, in March or April 2020 uh, they are still not heard, and it's 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 pretty remarkable, really. If we had heard a bit more debate at the time, mm. maybe we'd have done things differently, and we'd be in a better position now. There is never a benefit to silencing opinion, no matter how ludicrous you may think that opinion to be.